Did you want the average? Uh, no, peak. 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 Pain, really. Uh, yeah, I think sort of the first minute or so, it's just you don't you don't really know what what's going on or what you've done because it's just it is just a load of pain. And then sort of after a minute, and you sit up and see everyone around you, and um, just remember Gaz's the the physio's face just being pure white. So I was like, all right, um, obviously must be something serious. So. And you can try to get through like tests and stuff like that as well. Just get more data on you. Okay. To be honest, after the, after the minute, the pain goes away. So I thought I could probably just walk off here and everything everything would be all right. Um, but then obviously, yeah, I came off and need need swollen up. Um, and then I guess just everything's racing through your mind. But I think after looking at everyone and sort of how it was feeling, I, I felt like it was probably going to be bad news. Um, and then yeah, got the scan back and. Obviously said that that I'd done four, four or five sort of serious, serious injuries. So at that point, um, sort of obviously every every thought goes through your mind in, in terms of when am I going to be back? How long is this going to be? Am I going to play again? Um, sort of all those worries. But I think yeah, because it's such a long term injury. I don't I don't think it really sinks in until you sort of you you are sort of post surgery and. You're actually going through it because um, at the start they obviously tell you that you've done something bad, but until you sort of go through the process, I, I don't think it really sinks in. Taken quickly by Brown and Cl Kieran Taylor, Carl Taylor, sorry, picks it up, cuts inside, goes down. It looked like there was a touch there. The referee wasn't. In. Kyle Taylor looks in all sorts of bother here. The City man is still down. It looks like it might be serious. This. Yeah, very worrying from the physio. Just sort of. Uh making sure that Matt Taylor knows there's going to be a sub straight away. It's, it doesn't look good, unfortunately, for Kyle Taylor. He's, oh, but it's very worried. Everybody looks very, very concerned at the moment. I, I, I just hope he's OK. Yes, he's still down. He's receiving treatment, and the, the City players are clearly concerned for their teammates. Yeah, that's, they've got quite a lot of people around him at the moment, physios and stewards, and you know, the medics are, are trying to, to sort him out. Let's just let's hope it's OK. But... Uh, it doesn't look good, sadly. Sadly, you're leaving uh, the pitch on a on a stretch, which is a really, really sad sight to see. And he's getting uh, a round of applause from all four sides of the ground here. He's being stretched off in front of the away support. 400. Kyle's gone down, expected to be a non-contact injury, um, and you could hear the scream straight away. Um, Gaz ran straight on and assessed it, um, and quickly realised there must be something wrong, um, and has put his hands up as an X sign. Um, so on a game day for all the medical staff. If you see the physio run on and do that, um, it means there's something quite serious happening. So I've ran straight on. And I remember Kyle firstly saying that he felt like it stopped hurting, it wasn't as bad now, and he wanted to get up and walk off the pitch. And from that moment, we were like, Kyle, just relax. This could be something quite serious. So we got him onto the stretcher and then just stretched him off into the, uh, the medical room. Football being football, that there are so many sort of ups and downs and you get so used to that. Um, and obviously it's, well, it's easy to obviously say, just focus on what you can control and that's obviously training. And then if you do get your chance, try and take it. But um, yeah, I think it, it was frustrating, but you know, you just, you just sort of get, get on with things and Obviously, looking back, you could always be like, oh, if I did this differently, did that differently, um, then it might be a different thing. But I think the main main thing for me was how quickly sort of can you come to terms with, with what's happened? Um, and then just sort of moving the goalposts almost and saying, OK, well, if I'm going to be out for, for a year and a bit or whatever it will be, um, just focus on, on each day, really, and the present rather than worrying about sort of what, what's going to happen. Well, I was sort of sat with the physio and then um, had to get back on the coach, um, which was a bit of a long, long journey home. Um, and then, 
yeah, obviously got got the news of of the extent of the injury, which uh, came through basically on a text, and I just seemed to keep scrolling. I was like, where does it, where does it end, sort of thing. Um, which yeah, I, th I think obviously when it comes through, I didn't I didn't understand what it was, but I saw ACL, which was was the thing I sort of noticed, and then found out that I'd obviously done ACL, my lateral, and I think it was medial meniscus, and then. It was some sort of bone damage, I think osteochondral defect it might be called, um, and an MCL grade one. So I was pretty aware of the fact that ACLs are normally mm. normally the worst one you can have, and that, that's nine months, but quickly found out that sort of it, it would be two different processes where obviously meniscus and bone damage was, I wasn't able to walk for sort of eight weeks and had to basically non-weight bear for that time. And then ACL is a very sort of opposite approach where you try and load it uh, reasonably soon. So I think it was hard knowing that I was going to have to have two separate surgeries almost. And the first one would obviously get me to a certain point. And I think the hardest point was doing the work post the first surgery, uh, knowing that the second surgery was, was obviously going to set me back straight away again. So, um, but yeah, as I said, we've, we've got to where we are now sort of a year on and, um, it's not been an easy process, but it, it definitely does sort of make you stronger and I think appreciate playing. Um, and and yeah, you just, you almost have to fall in love with the gym somehow. Um, and yeah, no, I'm looking forward to, to coming back. Um, hopefully not, not too far away. No, no, you can go for it, you can walk and you can do, as long as you've just got the timings of, of your recovery and then we can shorten that as you get fitter. Don't just go through the legs collapse and that's what I'm saying. Not the other day I did one. I actually, I actually might have to put out the scratch mark if I do that again. Have you do that session? Yeah, that's not a tough session. It's always difficult. I think whenever you see an injured lad, you always want to try and sort of help him as much as you can because we've, we've all been there injured at some point. Um, and you never know, I mean, it's so unpredictable football, so you never know what's going to happen. But yeah, I mean, I mean, they were great at the start. Obviously, they just, they sort of said, because it's such a long injury, any time out you feel you need, um, take it, because um, it, it will be a long sort of process and any help you need, we're there for you. But I think, you know, we, we've all got our own sort of issues, so you never really feel like saying, oh, well, maybe I'm struggling here or there, but... The support's always there, I think, here, which is, which is great. I think the lads know that. It's just, it's obviously coming forward and saying, oh, maybe I'm struggling a bit here or, or there. It's, it's, that's always the hardest bit, isn't it? But um, no, I, I, it's, been a, it's been a tough process, but I've had good people sort of along the way and there's always been sort of mini targets to hit um, and things sort of to take my mind off it as well, which, which has definitely helped team would go on to get that promotion last season as well and I think I remember that Barrow night you getting a taxi here and seeing you in the Heritage Lounge after the game as well which must have been a nice moment to kind yeah. of you know be in and around the lads after that achievement. Yeah it was it was great I, was, I think it was hard to feel like oh yeah I'm part of this because I mean I'd been on crutches or well whatever post I think I was on crutches you at were, the time yeah. um, so it was obviously hard to be like oh yeah I feel, feel part of this but Ultimately, we all were, um, and yeah, for me personally, obviously first promotion, and I mean, it's a great thing for anyone from any league in in any country. So, um, no, it was it was obviously great to to celebrate that. Just just the shame I couldn't have been more involved more involved at the time, but yeah, no, looking back, it was it was great. Is that other yours on the board there? Hey, two. Yeah, I think I've got yeah, I've got six six times six. Max power outputs. Um, I don't know what that means. Yeah, so, well, it's, pretty, it's literally just max effort for six seconds. And I then, think I um, can match that, you know? <laughs> yes. I think six times that, that's to just get a, get a measure of where I'm at, really. Um, and then, yeah, so you, obviously six efforts, rest as much as you want in between. Um, and then sort of see how you're how your max efforts sort of differ it basically just tells you where I'm at and then and I guess as we go over the there, weeks yeah over the weeks obviously we'll try and get that power higher and reduce sort of the rest time in between 
um, to improve fitness, I guess. And then I've got 10 times one minute on. Um, keep my RPM. He's written 110, but I thought it was 100, so oh. that's going to be interesting <laughs> as well. But yeah, so um, yeah, that's my session. And then I've got lowers. And then up is this afternoon after lunch. Do you better wait as well? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So just basically the whole thing. I've got to just build up my strength from my muscle mass. Obviously, where I was laid on the sofa for however long, lost all my muscle. So building it back's been the hardest thing. Um, and gains, I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. So there are like blood flow things basically that you put around your legs, which I've been using. So hopefully that sort of increases my muscle mass uh, quicker. And then, yeah, I got upper body this afternoon, so big day today. And obviously, at, at the start, you knew, you know, this wasn't a six-week layoff. You were going to be out of action for, you know, at least a year, really, as well. So what did you, you know, how did you process that? And we were speaking to Adam, you said, you know, you've, you did things outside of football to take your mind off it. And are you happy just to kind of run through a bit about what you've been up to? Yeah, so um, I think... I'd always sort of been interested in maybe doing something alongside football or outside of football um, just to sort of fill time and, and obviously where it's a shorter career um, than other industries. I think it's important to sort of try and look to other things and take your mind off it. And for me, it personally helped in terms of I wasn't always reliant on if I'd have had a bad game or we'd lost on a weekend, I'd have had a bad weekend. So it sort of helped take the, the load off of that. But um yeah no so when i did my knee um it was sort of like what what do i do now how do i fill my time um and yeah i've always been interested in fashion and and art and so yeah i've been working on sort of trying to start my own clothing brand so um which is yeah it's probably been harder than i thought it would be and it takes a lot longer than i thought it would be so yeah i appreciate when i buy a piece of clothing now how much work actually goes into it um, but yeah, it's, it's just helped me in terms of, especially at the start when I was sort of led on a sofa for eight weeks and couldn't exercise, couldn't do anything. Um, it sort of gave me a focus and a bit of a purpose sort of to, uh, to keep working, even though I obviously wasn't going into football at that time. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a good opportunity for me to put my time towards something. And I think one thing, you know, we've noticed in the time that you have been out is that your attitude has been one, a positive one, you know, even through when you must have been times when you were struggling, but you very much had that mindset of, you know, seeing this as a positive and spending time trying to, you know, start your own business and stuff and, and do things outside of football must really have helped with that. Yeah, de definitely. And I think at the start, obviously, you can sort of feel sorry for yourself and think, oh, well, why have I got to be good around the boys if, if I'm not going to be playing for a year? But it's it's not really about that. And I think the club that we're at, obviously, everyone's here to sort of help everyone. And I think everyone in the dressing room is here to help everyone. Um, but, yeah, I, th I think support from, from other people. And uh, I've sort of got quite a few friends who have been through similar things and had ACL injuries as well, which, which also helped. Um, and just understanding that nothing nothing lasts forever, really. Um, and I mean worse things can definitely happen than, than what's happened to me so I think just trying to put everything into perspective really and um, as you said changing changing my goals really rather than thinking oh I'm going to be ready for Saturday I've got to train well it's sort of how can I come back in a year's time and be a better version be a better version of myself than I was a year ago um, and that's obviously improving my fitness in the gym and working hard football wise and then just improving myself as a person outside of it and learning about the business and trying to start my own business definitely uh yeah i've definitely learned a lot in in that time so hopefully by the time i come back i'll i'll be a better player and person for it and you've spent a lot of time probably with sam alfieri as well in the gym and just working on getting ready for your return i mean what what kind of things has he been putting you through over the last sort of few months yeah i think I don't know if he's had enough of me or I've had enough of him, but uh, no, he's he's been great and it's it's been difficult for him obviously with the transition um, that we had, changing managers and then physios mm -hmm. coming in and out. Um, he's sort of helped me through that and it's not just sort of the work that we do in the gym, it, it's sort of the relationship that you build sort of person to person and obviously I 
four out of five days at the start were probably bad days. Um, and obviously now I'm doing more and achieving more, it, it, it's a lot easier to get, to get on with things, but it's still sort of, I'm in the gym every day and thinking there's no immediate return to action here. So it, it can be frustrating, but he's had a lot of patience with me. I've, I've tried to have patience with the stuff he's given me, but um, yeah, no, no, he's been, he's obviously been great. And I think everyone's just, just been very supportive in, in terms of me coming back and making sure that I feel right and, and ready, not just physically, but mentally as well. Yeah, for me, quite, a, quite new into a physio role, like I'm not long graduated. Um, and in terms of the extent of the injury, I remember the surgeon saying it's one of the worst knee injuries he's seen. So it's extremely complex. So I had to make sure that I had a full understanding of what was going on with his injury. Through the whole of Kyle's initial rehab, I was in and around it, like trying to keep morale high, speaking to him, uh, making sure he was okay on and off the pitch, like you would do with most of the players. Um, but when, when Gaz left, I really had to pick up that relationship with him and create a bond which made him believe in what I, I wanted. So physios will have their own way of creating rehab plans. And with Kyle, I had a different view on how I wanted him to work. Um, we had a quite a good relationship anyway, so I knew about all the things he had going on outside of football, um, which is fantastic. And I wanted him to progress with and put time into I really needed him to buy into what I wanted, which was I needed him to work hard. For him to progress to where I wanted him to, I needed him to be doing at least five or six hard days a week, working on different areas, getting his range of movement higher, and then, yeah, overall getting his strength back. So I needed him to sit down with me and go through a process and for him to believe in what I wanted, really, which was which was tough and we had quite a few um, like meetings and conversations about how he wanted it to run and how I wanted it to run and we just put it together to try and create the best plan possible really. I'm proud of him for being able to dedicate time and effort constantly into something which is really, really difficult and he's such a nice lad and he come in and he's like got great charisma and I know that he was a big personality amongst the lads as well. So. It was tough to see him become quite isolated and become kind of not the character which we always saw. So it's about like building him up and letting him know that there is going to be an end to this. And we, me, Michael, new physio, we're going to put all our effort in to make sure that he gets the best results possible and comes back in the best shape he can really. And 12 months on as well, probably a lot of soul searching done in that time. But what would you say that you've maybe learnt about yourself or your view on, you know, life and your future in that time? Yeah, I think, I think I've probably learned to look maybe longer term and not, not be so sort of emotional short term. Um, and yeah, def definitely appreciate what, what you have. Um, because as you say, I think health health is number one, um, and when you don't have that, you you really miss it, um, and obviously missing football. But I think probably the biggest thing I've learned is to to sort of make make your life as full as as possible, really, because you never know when football is going to be taken out of your hands. So filling my life with other things around it, and friends and family, and obviously hopefully the business one day. Um, as yeah, it, it, I think it just makes you more appreciative of what what you have because, as you say, you don't know how long things are going to last. So, yeah, it's the the worst thing as a as an athlete, as a footballer, that you know the the job that you're you know built to do, you you can't do it. It's taken away from me th through no fault of your own. Obviously, since I came into the club, he was injured, uh, so it's. Disappointing I haven't kind of got that relationship with him out in the grass and seen the quality he has as a footballer But I've definitely seen the quality he has as a person uh, Every day he's, he's been in working hard in the gym on his own or, or with the physio But not with his teammates which can be extremely difficult uh, But I've seen a great determination and resilience in, in Kyle and even when he's had little setbacks along the way 
he's still positive, he's still upbeat and he has to keep uh, working hard to, to make sure he gets back on the grass as quick as he can. It is a long road, you have to be very single-minded, very determined, uh, you have to make a lot of sacrifices and uh, focus on your own uh, individual recovery uh, and it, I think it's a bad thing at the time but I think long term it can be a good thing because it uh, develops that resilience in you as a person and when you come back then I think it helps you as a footballer. It's very important to be on top of your own sort of mindset and mental kind of attitude as well isn't it during these times? Yeah yeah and no, I no, it, it's obviously easy to say and and look back and be like oh yeah okay it's all it's made me a better person but I think there's a lot of days when you wouldn't be good to be around and um, the hardest thing for me maybe was sort of recognising that I'm maybe difficult to be around or I'm not in the best mood but and then just just kind of accepting that, that that's okay and maybe part of the process not not every day is going to be a good day um, and yeah learning to to maybe say when you're not okay is is also important um, because you, you sometimes think you may be an inconvenience or people don't care, but I think people do. It's just just maybe feeling that, yes, it is okay to, mm. to say, oh, today's not a great day. I'm not in the best of moods, um, but tomorrow's, tomorrow's another day. Did you find it beneficial speaking to your teammates that may have you know, had similar long-term injuries to kind of get their perspective on it and how they dealt with it beneficial as well? Yeah, definitely. I think... Obviously, if if you know someone else has been for it, it's, it's like why can't why can't I go through that same process and come out the other side and and be stronger and fitter and um, yeah, a lot a lot of my close friends have actually had similar injuries. I think two or three of them had ACL injuries. So um, speaking to them was great and sort of understanding that yeah, it, it's a long time, but on the other, on the end of it, you'll you'll be a stronger person. But it, I think the most difficult thing at, at the start is people saying ah. Oh, get well soon and obviously you will come back stronger um, but until you actually go through the process and you realise that it is tough um, you don't realise until probably near I mean I'm obviously not not at the end of my my rehab yet but the stage I'm at now I definitely feel okay yeah I understand what they were saying um, it is a tough process but I've learned so much in that time and when I am playing I think I'll appreciate things a lot more than, than maybe I did beforehand. This last week you've you know, discovered that there's been a, a, a slight setback in, mm. in your recovery that's going to add um, a, you know, six to weeks to three months onto that. I mean, how, how do you process that news or is it very much, is that spur you on to kind of like, this is the final hurdle kind of thing? Yeah, it's, it's another difficult one really. It's probably similar to the, when I received the news the first time, I think I, I wasn't really prepared for this news either whereas maybe I was more prepared the first time so it was a bit of a sort of kick in the teeth I think it, it was sort of just to check obviously what what stage I was at and then obviously found that I'd need further surgery and obviously it's a further setback um, which yeah obviously won't lie about I wasn't I'm not going to sit here and say oh it's all okay but um, yeah I think all you can sort of control is well, it's important that you do try and control what you can control and the things that you can't, um, they are what they are and they're inevitable really, or at least in this case, sort of, I can't, I can't affect that. So all I can affect really is, is the rehab and going in every day and I don't think my gym work will change mm. too much. Obviously, I'm, I'm looking to just come back stronger um, and be ready for the physical challenge of playing again. So I think we're just building myself up and then... Then when the surgery does happen, um, it's just a case of okay, facing it in the eye and, and sort of challenging it head on, and yeah, we'll see we'll see how I get on. And can you just kind of briefly explain sort of the process of that and what you know what was picked up on your scans? Yeah, so I, again, it's it's hard to sort of say because mm. I don't know necessarily the technical terms, but I think I had something like a flap on on my meniscus um i think it's lateral meniscus and then there's an impingement or something with my acl which is basically blocking my range um and i think there's an extra bit of bone that, that's grown so um i think that that also needs dealing with so um yeah I, th I think it's difficult at this stage to sort of say because i obviously need to go in and, and see the surgeon and 
talk through my options and, and actually have more clarity on, on what, what is wrong and what needs fixing. Um, so until then, I, I can't really say too much, but I've obviously been through a big setback before, so I don't think it's, it's anything new. Um, just obviously frustrating that, that it adds time on, but hopefully it will make it all more worth while when I, when I come back. And I guess that that is the goal, you know, get through this surgery and just to get back out in the training pitch with, with the guys and just at that point, you'll probably feel like you've come through and you're on the other side of this. Yeah, yeah, it's it's difficult because I, I was out on the pitch more recently and I was pretty much doing everything I need to be doing just to a lower level. So I'd almost felt like, OK, this is this is the home run. I'm, for me, it was like as soon as I get on the grass and I can run and as soon as I have a ball at my feet, I'm sort of on the way back. Um, so I think that, that's a tough, tough pill to swallow. But yeah, I think the moment where I'm uh, past this surgery and sort of back out on the grass and, and with the boys and training and I can look forward towards my first game, I think that'll be the moment where I feel if football's different. It's always changing. You never feel like there's always room for improvement, even even when you're flying, scoring goals, playing well, you always feel like you can do better. So. I don't think there'll ever be a point where I go, OK, I'm back, I'm ready. But um, no, it'd be nice to, to get my boots on again and, and join in with some of the sessions with the boys, definitely.